Okay, let me explain what's going on today. Uh, the video here shows two water batteries, and uh, they're handmade. Actually, water is the uh, electrolyte, and they're in series. And uh, right now, I'm uh, charging up this capacitor. It's a super cap. And while the cap's charging, I'm running the uh, window motor behind it. And we'll go up here to the uh, meter and we can take a look at the charge rate. You can see it's a little slow, but it's actually charging the cap while it's running the motor. This is a 20 farad cap. So that's uh, not bad for the little water batteries. The circuit is a uh, Bedini coal uh, half-wave circuit, and uh, it's made without any resistors other than the one resistor that's in the trim for the trigger. I've uh, disconnected the water batteries now, and we'll just run from the cap and uh, take a look at what's going on uh, with that. The cap is sitting at uh, 1.36 volts right now, and it'll probably stay there for the rest of uh, what we're experimenting with here. The uh, winder motor here should be of some interest. The uh, uh, the rotor is a, a notch rotor, which is a little bit different than the standard kind of window motors with the magnets facing out. As you can see, these magnets are stuck in sideways. Okay, so I'll try to explain what I think is happening with this kind of a configuration. I actually uh, drew a little picture to uh, help explain This is a cross section through the rotor, magnets, and coil. You can see that the uh, north poles face each other as well as the uh, south poles. And what that does is it projects a magnetic field out from the uh, center. And you can measure this with a gauze meter. I measure it to look like that. As opposed to this where the magnets are north, south, north, south, and the flux lines are sort of just pulled right in. So you can see uh, at this point the coils, when they're over the magnets, really don't have the same effect as a, a standard motor where the uh, coils are working against ma uh, the magnets. These coils actually work against the fields in between the magnets. Take a look at that with the uh, rotor stopped here. Oh, I shouldn't have put that clay on there. Okay, and so uh, to go on, the the... Uh, the rotor is uh, magnetically levitated in this fixture, and you might have seen that on my uh, my other video where I was showing how the uh, ring and uh, cylinder levitation works. And you can see it uh, it takes off pretty good. It's running a, a little bit low in the cradle because uh, I have small magnets on the shaft right now. Let me explain that a little further. If you have a bad spot on the outside ring or the uh, inside cylinder, it's not so bad. You get a little bit of run out or eccentricity, but if you have both, you'll get some cogging and grabbing. You can put a magnet somewhere around on the outside to sort of counter react a weak spot or a strong spot on the ring, and uh, it'll help quite a bit. I got it uh, going pretty good here for a little bit of trouble. So it's running pretty smooth here. Uh, the batteries, we're going to get back to these batteries a little bit later. And uh, as you can see, that we're, we're still running at 1.360 volts. And uh, actually, it's, it's been running a lot longer than what the video's been going. As I've been out here bungling around trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. So there you have that. I've cleaned the circuit up a little bit and put it on this small board. The, uh, the blue capacitor, the smaller one, uh, I actually don't need it on there. I should have taken it off. 
it's not doing anything right now. But you can see we're happily running away there on the capacitor. And uh, next, I, I think what we'll do is take a look at uh, how some solar cells might run this uh, in the house, you know, out of the sunlight. And we'll see how that works. Look at this one. Well, we're not going to use this one. How about these guys? Okay, so we'll give them a try and we'll see if we can get them going. So this cell is actually from a solar light uh, they use uh, in the garden or whatever, lawn light. And it's uh, probably two and a half volts, pretty small. You can see by the size of the pencil there. And uh, it's running pretty good. If you take a look at the uh, meter right now, we're over here again on the uh, uh, microamp range, the uh, range right above the red. And it's for some r odd reason, these solar cells really run smooth compared to a battery. The uh, meter's rock solid, and it's running at about 53 microamps right now. The scale is on times 10. So that's running pretty good. Okay, I do have a confession here, though. Uh, we're r running on uh, uh, the lights in the basement, but I do have a little bit of a cheat going on here. See, I've got a uh, an incandescent bulb and a reflector way up here, but you know that's uh, far enough away that uh, you know it's still looking pretty good to me. The fluorescent light's probably not doing anything at all. Pardon me for stumbling around here with the camera. I have my dog behind me on the bench, and I. I don't want to knock them off onto the floor. So anyhow, I'm turning the lights off now, the uh, floodlight that you saw, or the uh, incandescent, and you can see that the uh, meter dropped down to about 40 microamps. And uh, so now that is actually uh, running from the uh, uh, light above me, which is fluorescent, and uh, running at 40 microamps is pretty good. Now here's the little guy, and it's really puny. It's probably only three-eighths of an inch by maybe inch and a quarter long. And uh, this is from a, a toy that costs a dollar, and uh, it's certainly worth a dollar to get the solar cell out of. But anyhow, it needs a little help, so I'm putting the flashlight on that, and uh, then we'll look at the meter. And you can see as I move the light across the cell, the meter jumps up to uh, over 50 microamps where it's uh, would be comfortable running so I would imagine in the Sun it would uh, be way over the 50 microamps and run pretty steady with this little cell <laughs> hey Rusty how you doing uh, you'd see some of these cells over on a lid motor site too uh, he's hacked into some of these toys This is another little deal here. This is a, uh, a solar flashlight. It's a little keychain. And uh, you might have seen these before. It has some diodes in there. Uh, there's a nice little uh, 3.6 volt uh, or 7 volt uh, lithium polymer battery or lithium ion battery in there too. And uh, I'm not going to hook that up right now because that's going to be a little bit different story. I'm going to actually put the circuit right in there. Actually, I won't stop. I'm uh, back to the uh, water batteries again, and I've actually put a direct short across the uh, the rails from plus to minus. And uh, <laughs> you don't have to worry much with the uh, current that these batteries have. They're pretty safe, I would imagine. Uh, you can see the, uh, the meters down to zero volts. And uh, I'm not going to hang around there too long, but just uh, show you that they they kind of recover pretty quick. See the voltage going back up over two volts uh, close to where it was at. Sometimes they'll even bounce back up a little higher. OK, 
Okay, I have something interesting to show you. The other day I took uh, two coils and set them on top of the motor. I hooked them up in series and I'm using them for the trigger. Then I took the uh, uh, window motor coil on the bottom, hooked the two, uh, two coils up in series and I'm using them for the power. So I ran the motor overnight on the capacitor doesn't cost me much to do that and in the morning when I hook the uh, voltmeter up to the uh, to the capacitor to the circuit uh, I was really surprised about something if you look at the meter the voltage is going down fast but wait a minute it's going back up and it's going back down back up. So this really surprised me. It really shouldn't be going up. I mean that capacitor should be draining all the time. So if I was only smart enough to be able to figure out what was going on here I could maybe keep the uh, going up part of this and uh, throw the other part of it to the side of the curb or something. But anyhow you know I think that that's uh, pretty interesting and uh, doing pretty well for the first time I'm trying to tune up this uh, motor with the uh, notch rotor and uh, when I find some better substitutes for the transistors and uh, work with the coils a little bit maybe uh, something better will come of it. We'll see pretty soon. Uh, now I'm working with this a little bit and uh, trying to see what I can do about getting the uh, current down on it a little bit and see if I can get it to be running lower than what my uh, conventional rotor was running uh, with on my other motor. So you can see the uh, capacitor is dropping now and it's not going up and down. And that's because I changed something a little bit and it has to uh, actually run <laughs> overnight again before it'll start to go into that little cycle. So I've hooked the scope up uh, across the uh, collectors now of the transistors and uh, looking to see what the uh, power pulse looks like and really I don't see one. So uh, yeah, well it's there and what I'm going to do is uh, try to adjust the scope a little bit and see what we have going on. I'm set to 1 volt per division right now so I'm going to switch to uh, 0.5 volts and I'll uh, move the trace down some and you come thing there now so I'll go to uh, 0.2 volts per centimeter I mean per division on the scope and I'll move that down and now we can see uh, we can see the uh, power pulse a little bit. And uh, to make a long story short here, I'll, uh, I'm going to skip some adjustments and just go to where I can see something. And uh, so there you can see what the uh, power pulse looks like. And it's right on the uh, top of the uh, the sine wave. And it sort of looks like a sort of a bell curve like. It's really tiny though, isn't it? So anyhow, that's what's running the motor. And that's probably why it's so efficient right now. So I tuned a little more moving the coils instead of changing the uh, resistors in the trigger circuit. And we'll have a look at the meter and see how we're doing now. You can see we're running around 25 to 35 microamps which is lower than uh, any of the window motors I've had running so far. We'll switch to the uh, times one scale and we'll jump up a little bit where it's easier to read. It'll climb a little bit because the uh, meter impedance changes a little bit and the rotor slows down. But it should uh, stabilize somewhere around 30 microamps. 
see the needle bouncing I've got some really uneven magnets I have to get that straightened out and that will do better too so we're watching the voltage on the capacitor right now and you can see it's going down but you have to remember that the digit that you see changing here is one one hundred thousandth of a volt at a time so uh, it'll run a long time on this capacitor well there was a lot going on in this video I hope it wasn't too confusing I also uh, have a video of uh, how I made the water batteries and uh, you know if you're interested keep your eye open for it and uh, we'll see you over there I hope you enjoyed the uh, video and take a look at some of the other ones I have. Take care now, friends, and good luck with your projects.